Hi, this is Jennifer, and this is my multi-genre project, um, genre one, sociological analytical review. Um, basically what my project is, is I'm focusing on the future of marriage and how feminism has influenced it. And uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it and um, kind of things I've found out. So, here we go. The future of marriage and feminism tied together. In the study of social interactions and stratifications of community institutions of public discourse, it is interesting to see how our culture advances and alters perceptions of these institutions like marriage and human rights. The issue is indicating how current public developments and human rights have shifted the social expectations on what a marriage should be in society. The being of marriage is a debate of privatized and public necessity among community discussions. These indirect communal decisions on what marriage looks like now shows change in general roles of men and women involved in said relationships. Noting the progress from developments in women's rights and feminist movements and how it has changed for both men and women in the, within the institution of marriage. We get into the family part. And family is a social structure in the past compared to how it is in the future. And the advances, the advancements of technology and our social opportunity has changed the roles of men and women. Evolving social expectations on individuals help to shape the ideas of social institution and social discourses. Um, the meaning of social discourse is the publicly agreed upon rules of society. So. You're expected to get married to someone of the opposite sex at a young age, uh, white picket fence, suburban house, middle class job, kids and pets, and yeah. <laughs> However, questions arise when observing the gray areas of the gender line involved in the personal aspects of the debate, because these families are not everyone's families. A lot of people are a lot different. So what are, the, what are the roles of women now? What were they in the past? Um, how do stratification developments change modern expectations of marriage as a social institution on a personal and public level? Meaning marriage is a very personal decision, but for government stuff, it's a very public thing in legal, you know, tax benefits and whatever. I'll get into that a little more in the end here. Um, in commonly known social discourse of U.S. society, women's rights have progressed through recent history, and because of this advancement in, in society, the women's roles have changed. Um, let's see. So starting back in the 18th and 19th century, um, marriage was starting to evolve from just a business transaction between parents to marrying for love. It was part of the Enlightenment movement, so that was kind of interesting. And uh, that was quoted by David Maskey in his CQ Press article, Future of Marriage. In this article, he explains, he explains about how marriage used to be, or still kind of is, a, a rite of passage into adulthood. Um, this tradition started from ancient Judeo-Christian traditions of a man and a woman being unified by the act of marriage as a divine bond. The role of a woman is traditionally supposed to take uh, submission to the husband as a biblical command of their marriage roles. Since the advancement of society, like much later in the Industrial Revolution, it gave people, quote, a geographic and social mobility that they hadn't had prior to the Industrial Revolution. And we were living on farms and such. In the 1960s and 70s, when the Civil Rights Movement integrated into U.S. culture, yay, <laughs> with women's rights and the feminist movement being a part of the surge of freedoms attained from that point in history. Since then, modern women have become used to the luxuries fought for by powerful women during that time. In retrospect, that was only roughly 55 years ago. Our culture has made leaps and bounds in the human rights movement, and as stated from the article Feminism's Future by Charles S. Clark of CQ Press, he cites Betty Friedman 
and she's now uh, a teaching at Mount Vernon College in Washington. And uh, she wrote The Feminine Mystique in 1936. And she said, um, the fact that young women take women's gains for granted is a tribute to what we've done. The world is their oyster, and I say hallelujah. This is the result of 30 years of this marvelous transformative movement from a time when their mothers couldn't and didn't aspire to these things. I'm stopped on the street by a young woman who says, thanks, my mother says you changed her life. Since your culture has developed into a consumer culture with emphasis on choices and personal freedoms, it's no wonder that marriage is also evolving. The trend that some experts suggest could happen is that more families will be made up of single parent households and cohabitation. Cohabitation is when two individuals may live together but they aren't legally married or uh, they may love each other, you know, or they may not cohabiting. Ha yeah. And uh, women no longer need to get a husband for economic support. So that gives independent women the option to not get married for financial reasons, which you use, a woman would use to have to get married for financial reasons. Even men are now choosing their mates based upon the woman's ability to provide financially to the partnership. Men used to look for women that were great homemakers and housewives. And that's still sort of part of it, but now they need someone who's equal to them enough that they can both, you know, work for what they want. But because of the modern role women take as independent equals to men, they are now expected to provide economic support to the family unit. Uh, working mothers are a common role for most women now, and the debate in the feminist community and uh, other conservative communities is um, what are working mothers you know, what are the consequences for the children that they're not staying home with? Um, as a modern woman, I do see women and children thriving from the opportunity to have both a career and a family. Um, I know my mom did it great. <laughs> and uh, the definition of family is also part of the tricky debate on how marriage or partnerships are viewed on a massive social scale. Many couples are cohabiting instead of getting married. An interview from Demetria Hengen, who's a, a businesswoman, pointed out in the Future of Marriage article, she says uh, she sees herself having long-term relationships that may be permanent but will never lead to matrimony again. She was married 18 years before they took this interview. or She was married for 18 years, yeah, so she got divorced. And she said, um, Marriage is also uh, something that she she doesn't need. It's a kind of constraint on her. Um, and like so many other Americans, she was one of many that got divorced and now feels this way. Marriage has also changed in its permanent role in individuals because of 50% of marriages end in divorce. The people who had parents that hadn't been divorced have also been influenced by the flux in this institutional expectation of marriage. Personal decision on the individual level are what really decide if people want to make that kind of commitment publicly. However, due to the issue like bad credit, criminal records, people are deciding not to get married because of the compromise this, take, this takes on them legally. Um, the Bush administration, this is good, <laughs> The Bush administration was able to give tax breaks to couples that married, which was supposed to provide incentive for people to get married for monetary value and more public duty process. So like a community thing, if everyone's married, they're supposed to be healthier, blah, blah, blah. Um, they also attempted to target the poor by promoting that single parents get married for government benefits. Um, they called it the Healthy Marriage Initiative. They did not recognize that poor people are relatively unstable because they have so much they have to deal with on a personal level. And most of the children in this economic area are, quote, born out of wedlock. Um, and part of the article I read um, on this and the future of marriage was um, since the the poorer community is a little more unstable and they usually have like drugs and stuff like that. 
do you really want to put your kids around that kind of, you know, attention? If a single mother's doing all right on her own, you, she doesn't need to get married because the government thinks so. Um, most of the, so yeah, the promotion that Bush was trying to start was to get the biological parents of the child to be married. In ways, this is a form of government discrimination. Instead of using this money to get people to, you know, be self-sufficient, especially women, because that's what they're targeting. They're targeting um, single mothers to get married. And they're not saying get married to another woman. They're saying get married to a man so he can take care of you. It's not okay to me. <laughs> the conservative traditions teach that women should need a man to survive. But as the future of feminism shows, it isn't likely at all. Women are advancing more every day as equals to men, and they should be. And with that comes social t change in traditional social institutions like marriage. It's not to say that marriage will disappear, but it's worth accepting the changes of our social discourses on an individual level to compensate on a massive scale. Getting government programs to acknowledge the social development of culture would help out individuals, human beings, and therefore make us all live better and for generations to come. This is Jennifer. I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope you learned a lot. And I will talk to you later. Bye!